The third geomagnetic storm in one day has just hit the atmosphere, leading to some potential big changes in tonight's auroral outlook. And I'm gonna go over those changes in this video. So what we're looking at right now is the BZBT chart. This is measuring essentially the aurora activity in the atmosphere. And you can see yesterday, this thing went off the rails, just went boom, just like that. And you can see it happening again here Wednesday afternoon. This was the view yesterday in Iowa. I actually drove up to Iowa and some people saw it down in uh, Florida. So pretty crazy rare event. And there were some cool like green splotches out of the head of the main red and uh, green arc, but it was plain as day up in Iowa. Here's a quick time lapse. Looks super alien. You could see the motion there. And those are some of the planes as well. Cool shooting stars as well out there last night. And every once in a while, you'd see this big explosion of reds, deep greens, and some blues. Those are substorms, essentially the magnetic field whipping back and forth with that plasma reacting with those nitrogen and uh, oxygen molecules. And you can see those yellows blow up. Every once in a while, you'll see substorms. So the aurora might sit and have this green arc, and then for about five or 10 minutes, it'll just go crazy. And that's really when you wanna be out watching those things. So pretty crazy events, plain as day out there in Iowa yesterday. There's been some big changes since this solar flare has hit. Now, will tonight be crazier than last night or was last night the big night? There's a couple of key things I wanna show you. This is the model from the SWPC a couple of days ago. This was that first flare that hit and that second flare that hit. Those both hit last night. Look how dense those are. This third one you'll see, not quite as dense. That's the, the flare that just hit. It's also not really too crazy on the uh, charts here. It is, you can definitely see it. There is the potential for Aurora, uh, but the question is, did that CME, did most of that brunt uh, miss Earth? But it definitely hit uh, you know, this afternoon. So the question is, how far south will that get? So let's take a look at the latest Aurora forecast from the SWPC, and then I'm gonna show you a simulation of how it could look later this evening. This is a pretty similar forecast to yesterday. So they had the, the red line all the way down to here into the central US into the northwestern, northeastern United States. Except yesterday, some people in Florida were reporting the aurora. Some people in the southeastern United States were reporting the aurora. Now, will that happen again? It seems to be less likely tonight, at least in the southeastern United States. However, I think this uh, overall chart looks more accurate tonight. Uh, last night, it definitely overperformed. A very good chance up in Canada, up into the northern U.S. and the Dakotas, a moderate chance between that red line and the greens, okay, and then a slight chance uh, further south. I mean, much, much less likely. But that red line right there, you see, that's the horizon line. So if you're between these colors here in the red line, that essentially means look north. You might be able to see the aurora on the horizon as like a little green faint arc. If you're in these red areas, that's much more likely you'll see it overhead, like many people across the country did last night. To me, that doesn't look extremely impressive like it did last night. That's last night's. This is tonight's right here. Uh, but we'll again, we'll keep watch. These things can change pretty rapidly. This is the early afternoon on Wednesday, so it's happened a few hours earlier. And so the question is, will the aurora last through the evening? If you want to get out, you probably want to get out earlier tonight. Here's a simulation on how the aurora could look tonight. And we did this yesterday, and it was pretty close to being accurate here. So let's uh, try this out again. So this is the sun. This is the earth. This is the plasma coming off the sun. And these are values you're going to see on your phone apps that can give you indication on when the aurora is going to be crazy and at what time. So the first one we're going to look at is density here and uh, kind of simulate how it could be tonight and what it was like last night. So the density last night, essentially measuring the plasma density from the sun interacting with the magnetic uh, field. And so the more dense, the more likely that aurora is going to be dense. But you'll notice uh, not a ton of aurora activity yet. That's because the BT needs to be increased. The BT is that total magnetic field strength. And if that's really strong, that aurora is going to be pretty darn potent. And last night it was it was pretty maxed out. So both of those things were pretty much maxed out. And then the last thing is, why is the aurora just in the North Pole and not further south? That is your BZ parameter, the southward component. And watch what happens as we move that to the negatives. So when it's in the positive, it's going to be not as likely to be visible if you're farther south. If you get into the negatives, you'll see that aurora expanding further south. And then maybe the U.S. is kind of right here-ish. 
Okay, so yesterday that thing went down to negative 60. This simulation thing only max out to negative 30, it looks like. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that is some pretty intense auroral activity there. And the density and BT values were maxed out and the velocity was quite up there as well. And the velocity is just measuring the speed of that activity coming towards Earth. I suspect that the velocity will be a little bit, potentially a little bit stronger tonight as this flare was a lot quicker uh, moving. And as those uh, values increase, so do the KP index. Now, this is the easiest. If you don't want to like worry about these, you can just focus on the KP index. The KP index runs from a zero to a nine, zero being very unlikely you would see it, uh, a nine being very likely you would see it, and it runs from the different latitudes. So you'll see like a KP of three, that's gonna be farther north, a KP of nine is gonna be a lot farther south. Last night it was like almost a nine, and probably was a nine, because you're seeing it like in the southeastern uh, US. Uh, but tonight, I wouldn't be surprised if those values are more like a five or a six, so that the northern fringe of the United States, maybe a little bit less likely with how the current data is coming out uh, farther south. And what are the forecasts? Well, this is uh, the current forecast. You see it's an eight or a nine, and it trickles overnight to a, a seven or a six. I think these values are going to be lower than what this says currently. Uh, so maybe more like a five or a six. But again, these things, the magnetic field got blasted three times. So this thing is very active. And this is a whole nother variable we have to watch here. We're going to start off at 7 p.m. tonight uh, when there's a decent chance. This is low clouds in the gray. Medium is the purple and bluish color is the high clouds. You can get away with seeing the aurora sometimes with high clouds as those are cirrus. Sometimes it can kind of peek through. Uh, but the lower and medium clouds are going to be a little bit trickier. So 7 p.m., it's a, there's a decent chance in the northern central U.S., out into maybe even parts of the Midwest, for seeing the aurora. Pretty tough sledding in the northeastern and northwestern United States. If you get a really early big substorm, you might be able to see it down in the Tennessee Valley into the central plains and maybe even southeastern United States if uh, things are, are potent like they were last night. And the dynamics are pretty similar, so we'll have to keep watch on that. As we head towards the evening here, uh, fast forward this a few hours, we'll go to, uh, let's say, midnight. You can see that the clouds are starting to move in. So big time uh, changes here in the northern uh, parts of the United States, a big, a nice high cloud layer moving in. Again, you could still potentially see it uh, around midnight in the northern US. Now, if you're right below these uh, cloud lines, it's going to be hard to see it because you're looking north right into that cloud deck and that aurora is often hanging around, uh, hanging out around the horizon. So that'll kind of interfere with it. It's almost like if you're further south, you might have a better chance because that aurora is way farther up in the atmosphere than the clouds. But again, the field of view will be a little bit better uh, because of that. All right. So as we fast forward this, it, it doesn't change too much except for the northwestern United States. We'll go like uh, right before sunrise, around 5 a.m. or so. The clouds really do move into the Midwest and Northern Plains. Again, spotty chances still later on. But look at the, the Northern Rockies and even parts of Nevada. If it gets that far, that would be nuts as well. Th there is a, a slight chance you could see the aurora, spotty activity there with those clouds. So your best bet's going to be around then. Maybe some peaks of clouds uh, moving out or peaks of uh, clear skies in the northeastern United States as well. Southeastern United States, uh, your best bet's going to be earlier on in the evening. So that, that's the uh, cloud forecast. Now, uh, what about some uh, cool apps and stuff? My Aurora forecast and alerts here. It's got all those stats that I talked about, the KP index, cloud viewing uh, percentages. They're, uh, you know, summaries. So again, you'll want to know the BZBT if you're more of an advanced Aurora uh, chaser. Uh, but yeah, some cool stuff there, and they have that as well. And then the uh, lightpollutionmap.info is pretty cool. This shows you where uh, like darker areas are. The blue colors and less are you know where it's going to be really clear. Hard to see the auroras and the reds and pinks, but heck, last night, some people saw them right in the middle of the city, so that was pretty crazy. And uh, those DSLR cameras and now phone camera long exposures can pick those up as well. So Hope you enjoyed today's update. I'll have some more updates uh, with some other crazy weather events and more space weather updates. Uh, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this video and good luck tonight if you go out and we'll see you soon.